Um, What's up, Jacob? Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> um, a sociopath is it's somebody who doesn't have emotions. Now, if you have emotions are what helps a lot of us make value judgments. <laughs> and it's, I believe it's with sociopaths, but whenever they, um, when some, sometimes people, after they've been through a head injury, they can actually sever parts of their brain mm -hmm. that allow them to make value judgments. So if you ever go shopping with a sociopath, it's horrible because they don't care which shirt, you know, they don't care if it's red or blue, you know, if it's expensive, they just don't give a damn. And it's very hard for them to make va any sort of value judgments. Mm -hmm. So do you think it would be a particularly great idea, actually, for in many cases, to build a robot to have those value judgments, particularly when dealing with, for example, the nuclear reactor scenario, where you have something working there. I mean, say you've got two problems. Uh -huh. Which one's it going to fix first? That's an open question. And I mean, suppose you send a worker in there. Don't you have the same question to ask? I mean, uh, to what extent do, do human beings follow orders the way that those who write up their directives would want them to? So on that account, much of what we get out of a robotic system okay, is of value in relation to human systems because they may supply for us a way to get the data that the system is dealing with also sent remotely back to someone else who can oversee it and perhaps shut it down if it's going, if it's going to be troublesome. Right. You can't really do that as effectively with a worker. Right. Okay. So, and, and yet, it's the workers who we prize for their value judgments. Yet, it's also workers who can make very bad value judgments. So what, I, I don't think in that sense we need to solve the problems about how to deal with human workers before we try to implement artificial workers. What we can then instead do is say that there's something about the cognitive structures of human beings, okay, when they are properly functioning persons, and there's something about the emotional structures of persons that is useful for making decisions. Now, if we can, from the ground up, try to build a controllable support mechanism for that, maybe we'll be able to, uh, let's say, uh, build systems that where the variables in their operations are a little more controllable and they're more directable. But we're gonna try to do that only in virtue of how we de develop from the top down a conception of our own cognitive and emotional structures and then try to get them to meet somehow. And we don't know if they can because we just don't know if what we're building from the ground up with these robotic systems is actually aiming at the kind of thing we're trying to reverse engineer from the top down in ourselves. We just don't know that. I don't think that should be an obstacle. And the thing is, is that philosophers fetishize the problem of consciousness, okay, and treat that as the primary concern, and then poo-poo a lot of this other work, when what they could be doing is, is setting aside what is a legitimate philosophical problem that is simply irrelevant in this context, okay, and instead investigate what is relevant in this context with respect to the rest of the philosophy that just sets aside the problem of consciousness. Right. So maybe I've done a nice roundabout on your question, but, uh, but the thing I, I'm, issue, I'm concerned about is this. Uh, it's just, I think, a matter of fact that computer engineers and robotic, or computer scientists and robot engineers want to develop aut autonomous robotic systems that can make value judgments. They want to do that. What I want to say is, well, Locke provides a general philosophical framework for conceiving of the targets for that kind of enterprise. I see. So it's that's it, my claim. It's the difference between like HAL from 2001: A Space Odyssey and, for example, a conscious mirror, which simply is t takes in information from the outside mm -hmm. and reflects everything else back that it can, that it knows or can see about the world, including the fact that it can think. Right. And also think about this with respect to HAL. HAL got shut down and started back up. Whereas if it wasn't Hal who was running that system, the solution would be a bullet in the head. And it's a lot harder to build the person back up once you shot that person. So a robotic system, though, or a, you know, a, Hal basically is a gigantic robot. He is the ship, okay? And, in, in, and so Hal, in that sense, can be shut down. Then you can say, well, where is the part in the code where the problems are? Not exactly an easy task, but nevertheless, you can try to narrow it down a bit. Okay? And once you do, then try to implement the solution. And then what do you get? You get your machine back. Or you get a structure that you can then implement into a new machine. Right. We really can't do that with ourselves. 
that's almost where psychology comes into play because it's it how do you does. it's almost how do you control what people's value judgments are but what we do with the psychology is it, i think in this operation is this we don't um uh treat the psychology as in any way being special instead what we do is treat it as supplying for a structures to study that can then set up a target for practical tasks in uh, computer science and robotics and so in that sense what we do in studying ourselves is supply for us both the problems and the virtues, the problems we face and the virtues we wish to exploit, okay? So if we can understand the connections between them and how the underlying systems for us seem to correlate with it, we don't know how they correlate, but if we can work out what kinds of correlations there are, then we can at least try it in this other system. Right. And in doing that, control the problem aspects and enhance you know, the better ones. So that's what you should do in computer science, okay? It, it, what, what I'm saying there is, it's very easy to talk about that in broad strokes, okay? But implementing it, whole other story, okay? And, and that's the story, we just don't know how to do it. But there are these researchers trying. So what I wanna say is, that what they're trying to do can be sketched out around them, okay? So that the philosophical issues that are associated with what they're doing, okay? are comprehensible. All right. Thank you. Dylan, what's up? Uh, have philosophers considered the idea that there would be a like virtual mind, a virtual simula uh, simulation okay. that makes the transition to like a bona fide mind that has, you know, these feelings, but that the feelings that it has and the real emotions it has are incompatible with the way that we have emotions. So as to say okay. like a robot that would have like very different kinds of qualitative states. Yeah, would have the same qualia, like the same I, types I, of qualia as I us. do not know. That is, that is, I do not know who's developing that kind of work. Just totally ignorant of that area. I would expect that there are probably a few, but I, I can't point your way to any that are. Um, that said, uh, as we try to understand the stimulus that we're going to induce in robotic systems, and whatever kinds of computational process we want them to employ, okay, and whatever conception of damage and well-being is actually, in fact, appropriate to the type of morphology that that system has, to its shape and how it's actually formed. Uh, from that standpoint, it, it would be inevitable, I think, that they would have very different ways of dealing with their stimulus than we do. We don't want to implement into them artificially frailties that are inappropriate for their type. I would want R2-D2 and C-3PO to recognize that they are built out of parts where there are spare parts and they could be blown to bits and it's not really a problem, okay? <laughs> so on that account, they wouldn't have a need for any deep sense to protect these particular organs, okay? Uh, they just told me that we need to cut it short, but I am available to take any of the questions that you have, okay? Um, so at any rate, I'll, I'll stop and...